I've been living here on this farm for about 10 years. A lot of these dogs come to me from people dumping them. Dog starts giving them a little bit of problem. The first answer is to dump it. You know, find them dumped down here along this road a lot. There is no shelter here. I'm the shelter. As a matter of fact, the city and all the little cities surrounding me come to me with dogs that are stray. Debbie. You know, when I first moved in here, I had 40 dogs, and every year it gets bigger and bigger until now it's 110. Debbie. Hey, Betty. Lots of people come by and say, if I don't take their dog, they're going to take it and shoot it. And a man one time stopped down at the feedlot when I was working down there, knew of me and um, had a little beagle in his car and said that if, had a shotgun sitting right next to the beagle, said if I didn't take the dog, he can take it down the road and shoot it. And I just, I said, oh, of course I'll take the dog, you know, and I did, and, uh, but, you know, you, you don't even argue with someone like that. There isn't any use, you just help the dog. Everything's gotta just be for the dog. Good boy, Duke. Get out for a while? Oops. I don't understand how anyone anywhere can say no and walk away from something suffering and starving. I mean, I would never be able to do that. <laughs> Some of these dogs come in, you know, never had a kind touch and not been fed. And some of them, you can tell they've never had a hand on them. Every one of them that I bring in, every one of them, they just are so thankful. You can see it in their eyes. When I was young, growing up, you know, that's all I cared for was the dogs. And when I lived with my grandmother when I was little, we had two dogs. Me and her had a dog. Well, when I was nine, my grandmother passed away. As we were leaving, my dogs were still in the driveway. My parents said, no, we're not taking them. And I said, no, we are. We have to take Duchess and Buster Brown. You know, and I was just pounding on the back glass to go back, go back, get Duchess and Buster Brown. We didn't, but, uh, so, you know, I was just a little girl then, but, you know, years later, I found out that, um, you know, no one did, they just left them. <laughs> I can't even hardly think about that to this day, you know, I still, sometimes when I go back home, I go out there looking for them. You know, my dad was not like me, you know, they're not dog friendly. You know, my dad had some hound dogs, but that was for hunting. I remember a pair of them had puppies once, and. Oh, I was in heaven over them puppies, you know. I loved them puppies. And I did spoil those puppies. He was so mad at me when he found out I spoiled them puppies that um, he wouldn't let me feed the dogs for a month. And then, uh, anyhow, he, um, he did end up taking those puppies and killing them. He said I ruined them. Back then, it was common to throw sacks of puppies over the bridge when a rock in the river. And uh, so I thought probably what happened. <laughs> to this day, you know, I always thought those puppies died because I loved them. And, uh, and I guess I have that to make up for, too. Shh. Cherokee! Cherokee. Well, we just, oh, yes, I am. Okay, we found Cherokee. He was up there with Sunday, so for 
I, I don't have any children, and uh, but the dogs are my children, and they know it. <laughs> and the ones that stay end up, you know, like Bambi is an old dog, and she'll live here throughout her life. And I have several old dogs that this will be their homes until they pass on. Now, the other dogs, like Cherokee, he, he's going to go to a home someday, and those people are going to see what I see. And they're going to fall in love with him, and he's going to get a great, wonderful home. I've had Cherokee for nine months, and finally today, he has a chance at a wonderful family. A dog that came from near death's door is finally getting his chance at a whole new life. You wanna go walkie? Let's go take you for a walk. You wanna go for a walk? I love him, and of course, I, I love them all, and I'd keep them all if I could, but there's better things out there for them better lives, and uh, he says he's ready to go, huh? Even though I hate saying goodbye to him, I'm so happy for him. Oh, good boy. Oh, he's such a good boy. Instead of being one of uh, 100 dogs, he's going to be one in a family. You know, if ever the day comes, you know, when they'll ask you if your life was successful, I'd say, yeah, mine was. Let's go. Oh, let's go. You don't get this feeling just from going to work every day and coming home nine to five. Uh, it's not as special as, as this is. Saving something, loving it, and it's your life. It's my life. Sugar, Roscoe, get up off your lazy butt. Come on. <laughs> They're good dogs. 